was the custom for Indians to begin almost any kind of meet, council, or even a dance by smoking a ceremonial pipe beside a sacred altar. Before Columbus came to America, smoking was unknown to the rest of the world. But to us, anyone who smoked a pipe with another bound himself in friendship and to tell only the truth. All pipes were sacred, and smoking was not a mere habit to us, but a ritual, communion, prayer. The earliest pipe was a bone or stone tube. Western Indians used a section of the leg bone of a deer, or sometimes of an elk. Clay from Mother Earth was used for some of the early pipes. After a time, they were made curved instead of straight. These are simple everyday pipes, rather than strictly ceremonial ones, and the bags in which they were carried. The final development was the tea bowl. A soft stone was now used in preference to clay. Sometimes a decorative comb was added, or even carvings of birds, animals, or people. This is an elaborately carved ceremonial pipe bowl of catlinite, the sacred red pipe stone, most prized of all stone for making pipes. In all the world, catlinite is found only in Minnesota and Wisconsin. These two quarries are holy ground, owned by all the tribes, and even if we met our enemies there, we would not fight. This ancient effigy pipe is from the Spiro Mound of Oklahoma and is more than 700 years old. In the southeast, the Catawba and the Cherokee had ceremonial pipe bowls made of clay and fitted with four or even six stems. Thus the chiefs smoked the pipe in communion at the same time, uniting in fellowship and common effort. The stem of the pipe is the spirit trail, the trail between man and the sky, the trail over which all must pass someday. In some ceremonies, the stems were more important than the bowls, so that no bowls were used. Nevertheless, the stem always had a hole through which the smoke or spirit could pass. Being straight, it symbolized the good road and that man should speak with a straight tongue. Even this Cree pipe stem can be smoked, for the corners were carefully split, hollowed out, and glued together again. The tomahawk pipe was invented by the white man, so we could bury the tomahawk and smoke the pipe of peace. We carried our best pipes and smoking materials in beaded bags with long fringe and porcupine quilled embroidery. Ceremonial pipe stems are often decorated with porcupine quills. The buffalo hair represents the earth and the great herds of buffalo that once roamed upon it. The feathers of the mallard duck represent the life existing in the water and in the air. Impervious to wind and water, they are used on the pipe stem to show that man should shed trouble and discord, remaining unruffled and tranquil. Long ago, some of our hunters saw a figure on the horizon. At first, they thought it was a sacred white buffalo, but as it approached, they realized that it was a young woman. She was the white buffalo maiden who brought the first pipe to the campfires of our people many, many winters ago. She taught us how to care for the pipe, the songs and rituals that go with it. And then she vanished. The original pipe is still in our possession, but is very holy and is kept in a sacred bundle. So few of us have ever seen it. But every pipe we have was patterned after the one she brought to us in that long ago time. To carry out her instructions, 
a holy man gave an invocation, a ceremony, to the four winds, the earth, the sky, and all of the powers of the universe to assure the success of any serious undertaking. Instead of tobacco, our people used a mixture of the inner bark of red osier and bearberry leaves, which we call chanchasha. The Chippewa call it kinnikinnik. We offer chanchasha to the winged power where the sun goes down, to the north and the great white cleansing wind, the east and the morning star, bringing the light of wisdom, to the south, the direction we are always facing, to the spotted eagle in the heavens, above all created beings, to Mother Earth, who gives us all good things. Tobacco is really a carib word, meaning the pipe itself, and not the material smoked, as the early settlers thought. The pipe tamper was made from a broken enemy arrow, symbol of peace. Tupaki amakata chewaki elohe. Tupaki amakata chewaki elohe. O anka kahikta. A circle is prepared on the ground, representing the universe. The little mound is the earth on which we live. Chewaki elohe. Tupaki amakata chewaki elohe. Tupaki amakata chewaki elohe. O wankakakhikta. At the center of the universe is Wakatanka, the great mystery. Everything leads into and returns to the center, which is here, and yet we know is really everywhere, and is Wakatanka. We cover these trails with chashasha or tobacco, representing the growing things on the earth. Red paint, sacred color of the sun, unites the life-giving forces of earth and sky making everything very holy and sacred. We offer this sacred gray grass, the healing sage, placing it upon the earth. The buffalo skull is the symbol of the great animals upon which we Lakota depended for existence and shows that all things return to Akantanka, who made them all. Here on earth, we live together with Tatanka, the buffalo, and are grateful to him, for he gives us food. And now we give him, our relative, this sacred gray grass. Coals from the fire, symbolizing life, the light of the world, the destruction of everything evil and unclean, are gathered to ignite the incense on the sacred altar. Ah, <laughs> 
on the way. Sweet grass is sacred to Akantaka and to all of his creation. The smoke is the symbol of spirit, and as it arises into the heavens, it carries the prayers of those below to the ones above, first going to Wohepe, the beautiful one, then to all the universe, which is Wakantanka. Great mystery, my grandfather, this is the day I am to tell your word, you yourself, the star nations above, everything that we see, Everything was made by you. Before you, nothing else was. Great mystery, lean close to the earth, that you may hear this voice I send. You, where the sun drops over the edge of the world, behold me. Thunder beings, behold me. You, where the white giant lives in power, behold me. You, whence the day breaks star and the dawn continually returns, behold me. Beautiful one, you dwelling with Itokach, where the summer lives, behold me. And you in the depths of the heavens, an eagle of power, behold. Mother Earth, our only mother, you who have shown mercy to your children. The powers of creation and of destruction are now united in the bowl of the pipe, which becomes in itself a sacred altar where the sacrificial fire burns. On the spirit smoke, we send a voice to all of the powers of the universe. Hear me, four quarters of the world, a relative I am. Give me the strength to walk the soft earth, a relative to all that is. Give me the eyes to see and the strength to understand that I may be like you. Great mystery, my grandfather, look down upon the faces of your children, that they may face the winds and walk the good road to the day of quiet. This is my prayer. Hear me, the voice I have sent is weak, and yet with earnestness I have sent it. By this pipe, the emblem of peace, goodwill, friendship, brotherhood, we know Wakatanka the great mystery 
will be with us. Now it is finished. Hello. Yeah.